Okay, for live from part two, here's, John, here's Greg Taylor right here. Team number nine, so now we're in the top ten. These folks are going to be really looking to move up today. Greg Taylor from Fairbanks right here. Looking forward to getting in there, moving up a position or two. Here we go, part two, folks. Back on, come and jump back on board. We're in the top ten now, teams nine through one leaving. Right here, live in Fairbanks. Greg Taylor, his team's out, off, blasting out. Remember, Greg Taylor took second place at the fur rendezvous just a couple weeks ago, so he's in ninth today. We've broken the feet up into two. This is the top ten right here. Team number eight coming in. Marvin Cochran, North Pole, Alaska. Any one of these teams can have a really big day. It's a 27-mile race. They added mileage. Thanks for joining us, everybody. You're back live here. Top ten teams heading out. We just did the 22 through 10, and now we're doing the 10 through 1. Here's Marvin Cochran. Let's go look at these dogs. Oh, yeah, good and strong. Some dogs just want to get tangled. <laughs> All right. Okay, here's Marvin Cochran, very experienced musher, North Pole, Alaska. He knows how to move up today. Top 10 teams right now, folks, at reverse start. Lynn Whipple joining us from Colorado. Thanks, Lynn. This is what, this is what Marvin's seeing, folks. Go ahead and share the feed. Invite your friends back on. This is the top 10. We still have the streepers to go. There's the kiss. <laughs> All right, Marvin's wife to give him the kiss and help count. There she is right there. We'll see what Marvin's wife sees. How they looking? Very good. Okay. She knows they can move up. She knows this is a big, big day today. All right, Amy Dunlap. Let's keep an eye on the Dunlaps always. I know day one, Buddy and Lena were saying Amy's the one to watch for. And she can move up quickly today. There's her one of her sons, looking good. There's her husband, looking great. Look, her neighbor, Jace, and all the handlers in. Look at that, lots of hands on these dogs here. Everybody's helping out. Oh, look at you guys. Look at you guys. There's the pit crew again. Hi, Amy. She's not at all nervous. <laughs> We're going to see the world through her eyes right here. Lots of fans saying, go Amy, you bet. She could really move up today. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. It feels like forever to a musher. Feels like even longer to those dogs. They want to go. You're in the top 10 now, folks. We already live streamed the other teams. They're already on the trail. The top 10 will go try to catch them, pass them. Got a seven mile extension today. There she is, moving nicely. Heading down that famous downhill stretch. 
out into the woods, and out here there'll be a seven mile extension, about 14 miles in, 15, 13 miles in, there'll be a seven mile loop, then they still have seven miles to go to get home, and they'll be coming uphill. Really exciting, here we go, we're in the top ten now, team number six. Ken Cheesick. There's Kenny Cheesick's dogs. Hi. Ken and Lori Cheesick. We got Karosh here. KP's keeping an eye on everything. He's come second in this race before. He's won the fur round day. Team six today. Smaller team. He hasn't been able to put many miles on. Ken Cheesick, folks. Ken and Larry Cheesick's team. Head now. is underway. Ken could certainly move up today. I heard somebody from the crowd yell, he's in the money. <laughs> Let's see if it stays true. Now we're in the top five here. Mark Hardum from Canada. This is where it gets serious, folks. Top five. Remember, reverse start. Bob Kupat started a long time ago. That's in my first feed of the day. This is the top ten. Now we're at team five. It's getting real. Every move they make counts. <laughs> Look at this string of dogs. Look at this string of dogs. Brought his family along. He's got his expert. There he is having a moment. That's cool as heck. Look at these babies. Smaller dogs here. Calm, nice and calm. Looking good. It's almost like a little vacation here. Calmest team we've had. Yeah. These are all serious runners. Some of the best sled dogs in the world. A lot of Arlie Reynolds dogs in here. Eggle Ellis the Hounds in here. These are champion lines right here. They're patient. They know what they're doing. They're not wasting a whole bunch of energy at the start. That's a calm looking team right there. Mark's got his earphones in. Probably listening to checkpoint times. Keeping an eye on things. Yeah. Yeah, perfect timing. This is what Mark sees. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Mark Hardum. God, it would be cool to have a drone right now, wouldn't it? Just to follow that team on down. He's on the, he's on the move. He wants to try to catch. Okay, Lena Streeper. We did have a scratch today. Rob Peebles is out. That means team number three is up. There's Lena right there. Thank you everybody, share the feed, click follow on there so you're ready, notified when I go live next time. I'm bringing you to the races, it's a great day to be a sled dog, it's great to be, to be a spectator. Coming around. 
the last one left. Come in nice and close. Five, and there's no waiting. Three, two, one, go. Lean the streeper. She's off. Lena Streeper is underway. Lena Streeper. You could see how she didn't come to her sled until about five, six seconds. Didn't have to have that long, agonizing wait. Better to visit her dog. She knew her sled was handled. Different techniques. Okay, Michael Tetzner from Germany. Looking to move up to first today. Take his first open North American. He's got his daughter always helping and his wife. His wife's at the front up here. His daughter's over here. Family effort. There he is getting the handshake. That's a, That's a big dog right there, isn't it? Wow. Muscle work, muscle development, different sizes. There's those wheel dogs pulling that sled. Here we go. We got, we got all these guys on live right now. We're looking at. Are you buddy, watching a different feed? He, he got a buddy got a, a handlebar mount. Oh, cool! Yeah, here we go, Michael Tetzner. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Go. Wow, coming in hot. Look at that. Buddy's team coming right in the start, you folks. Not messing around. Make sure to go to his page and try to tune in that live feed. He did 42 minutes yesterday. It was super cool. You can watch a whole team of perfectly trained dogs just lumber down the road. There they are. That's the live stream camera right there. He's got hot packs on it. Very cool. His buddy having his conversations. Remember last year, Roxy Wright won by just a few seconds. This put Buddy in second place last year. He's looking for a little redemption. Saying hi to Don Brown. Looking at his team, he knows these guys are professionals. Looking down there, keep an eye on Lena. These guys are pretty calm right here, right? These guys are pretty calm. Long legs there. That's what that race car looks like right now. Spaceship about to blow up. He's got control of the sled now. Got the live cam on, so tune into Bud Streeper on one browser. Five, four, three, two, one, go! There it is, the famous whistle. And number one, Buddy Streeper is underway. There he goes, nice and slow. He's keeping a good, good handle on the sled. Hold on a second. Okay, so cool. We're, I'm going to show you what, what's happening here. This is Dave Turner. He's not racing this race, but he certainly could. He's done mid-distance. He's done open class, right? Show me what you have on your phone here. Well, it is a little bit delayed, but... Buddy yeah. has Buddy has a handlebar mount. So Buddy's so camera's right there. You can the go whole, watch. We're gonna watch the whole race. How cool handlebar. is that, folks? So basically, at home, you should be getting your command center set up. Jay, come on in here. We're gonna see the whole thing. 
Sprint sled dog racing is changing, guys, right? So at home, you want to open up your computer, multiple browsers. You want to have the uh, ADMA official stream there because iCal is getting killer stuff up front. You want to have buddies in one corner here, throw ours in the other, and then maybe throw up some numbers, right? Or a live stream feed for the radio station. That's how I'd probably do it. I'd probably have the, the live stream for 89.1 and, and 660 streaming, and then I'd be watching, buddy. And there it is. We can see him heading down. This is what we're missing in racing. I'm here with Dave Turner, Jake Wichup. We're, we're trying to, uh, as a group here, evolve and try to storytell better here. We're trying to get... Uh, dog racing to be more exciting and some of the ways people are doing that is of course these live feeds with everybody like you joining us making it fun and then also uh, a sled camera because right now you can see how much power this is one of the one of the downsides of the, the handlebar mount which I used to GoPro some of my races is you see how it shakes so much right and so it's it needs like, a stabilizer right it needs a full yeah yeah so that's definitely but it's really cool that he has both but at least you're there on the trail you get a, a sense for the speed the pure power i mean there it is i know it's hard for our audience at home to see that uh but you two can now what page you on there dave turner buddy streeper right so it's real easy right just go to go to facebook do the bud streeper there's jason dunlap and his brother we were talking to his brother last night i said hey how would you make these races more fun he said let's turn on some music you look pretty spry today kale oh yeah there we go. jason's here to to be a subject matter. Should we, should we tell stories? Hey, so um, <laughs> so Rob Peebles dropping out puts Amy in a pretty good position, right? Yeah, moves her up. So she's now we sitting only needed, at four. We only need a few more to scratch. We scratch our way all the way to the top. And so tell our folks what that means. Like, why do you think that Robert scratched? Oh, he just said that, uh, you know, his, he said before the race, the dogs have been sick. Okay. So even, it's not necessarily that he drove them too fast. It could be a bug, bug stomach yes. bug. Whichever. Okay. Yeah. And that means that they, but bib number four is not here anymore. So it goes, your wife at bib number five and the right to lean the streeper at bib number three. So how do you do that? Sure. Yeah. I think, because I, I, I didn't see number four, babe. Yeah. Because no. he right. should have been number four, right? And then he scratched. Yeah, totally. Okay, so folks at home, don't get confused looking for number four. We're hoping that Amy Dunlap. Do you have, like, uh, any strategies? Amy, Amy seven. Like, oh, she's seven? What do you do with the, the 30 mile extension on the third day? Like, your dogs go into it, and how do you like handle them? And then coming out of that 30 mile extension, just let them rip. You let them rip the whole <laughs> Everybody has different theories. It's uh, you know, some some people uh, dogs are more responsive than others. It's I guess uh, you know, I, you know, sometimes they go in uh, and get excited. Right? I had never myself. I never experienced had that happy of a team. You know, going that they got way too more excited. I really had to slow them down. But you, you haven't had to worry about that. Much. No, no. So, so the North American is three days in a row. You have a 20, a 20. They run that same 20 mile course, but then there's a little extension of eight miles on it. Yeah. And so I'm today's extension day, right? Today's bonus day. So this is a bonus day with eight miles when you leave you leave the trail. So, so picture give or take 10 miles into the race. All of a sudden you're going to turn off the turn off the trail onto a new trail that they haven't uh, ran in the first two days, and you're going to go and you're going to run that eight miles of trail and then all of a sudden you're going to pop back on probably about uh 200 yards from where you had ex ran the trail you pop back on and and you've run this race a few times now right uh, a few. so when you when your dogs see that new trail uh, they sure always they, act the same well, way yeah no i mean they get they get excited right i mean but not like all of a sudden go from you know 17 mile an hour all of a sudden jump up to 20 mile an hour like i'm really concerned right i mean other people have and everybody's dogs are different they train them different whatever it's uh, you know but i've never had to copy that we're here with jason i've had dogs run harder coming out of the turn when they hit the trail because they know the trail's there they say oh, okay I know where i'm and then they just, you know, crank it up. But, but then I, you got to worry a little bit because you still have quite a few miles to go, right? Yeah, I've had, but I've also had dogs, you know, another mile down the trail tip over, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you never know. So, so I think historically that 30-mile extension, they call it, it's only 8 miles different, so it's like 28-mile run today, about. Yep. Yeah, so, 28, 20, it's, 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 everything's jumped up and they changed the trail a little bit. So it used to be the shy of 20, the real race, but it's uh, the 20 milers, but now it's like 20.3, so I'm guessing 20 point, 28.3. It doesn't usually get a lot of traffic. Um, 
through the training year, so sometimes it's softer. But Thank how is it this year? Well, it's probably it's been it's good. I mean, I, I assume, it, but uh, we have uh, with things that are different last couple of years than it has previous. And, I, and to me, I don't understand it. Is uh, we have a um, it's a dog trail, but they have a snow machine tour company um, is on there, right? And um, and uh, I don't know who gives it fish and game somebody, right? Uh, which I don't think it's right that they get to do tours on uh, our dog trail, right? All year long. What does it right? do to the trail then? It just tears them up, right? Uh, and, and last night they re we spent thousands of dollars doing this trail, and they go out and just tear it up all night long, right? Just and they're making money on it. It's uh, and okay. There's, there's, there's state land. I believe I feel that they can go run run their snow machine somewhere else, right? Why do they have to run them here on the trail that we groom for everybody in Fairbanks to come play on? So that's part of that playing nice, learning everybody learning how to get along, learning how to manage the trails. Yeah. It's like Arlie's here, right? We got Arlie in the house. Well, we also got a kid pop scramble going on. A kid pop scramble. So, so basically, what? We put sodas when you, out when you on come the trail. to Tanana, we do a beer scramble. Yeah. Okay, what's happening in Tanana in a couple of weeks? Oh, there's a pop scramble, and then there's a beer scramble. Okay, so they go look for pop cans right now, bottles. Scramble. Wow, I gotta go take a look. Thank you, Jason Dunlap, for your commentary and snowshoe race. And a Parker contest, right? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, that photo bombing thing. Hey, there's Paula. She's our race president here, or the club president, our former champion, Arlie. Oh, a lot of his dogs are out here. Together. Here's the kids getting their their pop challenge. Wow, that's a lot of soda. <laughs> what do you do with all that? Yeah, hold that all day. What do you do with all your soda pops? <laughs> All right, festive day here. Look at all the kids. Because I want to give her my purse now. This is the part about racing that we all love. It brings out the community, right? It gets the uh, yep. folks from all over Fairbanks, Tanana. Hey. Okay, what's the next race? So this is another pop scramble here. Um, so they do it by age group. So that if you see the kids out there now, they're kind of younger, so they're a little bit more scattered and like, like, oh yeah, we're supposed to be picking up pop cans, but these kids here at this age group, they're going to run out and chase after it, and it's going to be pretty aggressive. <laughs> so, okay. So we've got so it'll some, be super fun to watch. We've got some shenanigans here. Here comes the sodas. Can you see there's the soda. So it's, a, uh, it's like an Easter egg hunt for pop cans, is my understanding. And so in Alaska, soda costs about twice as much because everything's heavier up here right, to get up here. Look at how big the crowd is. There's folks looking at the leaderboard right there, checking on times. We're giving you a little more insider coverage here, the kids' stuff, so you can see when you come yourself to Alaska, that you can participate in our community of dog lovers, that you can be out here. Hope everybody's watching, buddy. Let us know how he looks on his live stream there. I saw some of you got the split screen and the live stream going. That's right, Patricia Spector, Spectator from our online audience. I love it too, it's super fun to see. Here's some of the moms getting the kids. Getting them in, we got people watching everywhere. Vendors, cameras. Mushers cutting through. Also, the checkpoint times, we're logging in on the Alaska Dog Mushers Facebook page, so you can put them up there. John McKinney saying, if I go to Alaska, I might not leave. I'm going to go ahead and put a big like on that. I'll change that later to a heart. It's a beautiful state. All kinds of opportunities up here for adventure, for seeing things you've never seen, for Aurora Borealis. There you can see they're dropping all the soda cans in the trail, so these guys will all be having their own fun here. Lots of kids. There's our one of our champions, Arlie Reynolds, providing expert commentaries. Uh, 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 expertise commentary, expert commentary. <laughs> Another brief night last night. I did manage to get about six hours. Oh yeah, that's right, Mandy. You're moving here. I know it. It's your destiny. What what age is this? What what age is this? Yeah. Oh, for the soda pops? Yeah. Six to ten years old. All right. All right. Look at all these kids. 
whole army of them going to race out there and get the soda pops on the same historic trail that all the champions, the George Atlas, the Roxy Wrights, the Arlie Reynolds have raced on. So it's bringing them right in. Okay, All right, yeah, I know it gets ready. Okay. Oh boy. On your mark. Get set. Go. Here we go, that's what it looks like. There they are, doing their thing. Okay, well you see it here. You can see the uh, the scene here at Mushler's Hall, very cool. I'm gonna get this phone on charge, get kind of reset, get my hands warmed up. I wanna thank all the sponsors for sure. These are the guys who make this purse happen help the mushers offset some of their costs. There's that view of the tower, so that's where all the, the times are being kept all up in there, and the lodge and all the folks from all over. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for here. Draw me back in about 20 minutes or so. We'll take another walk through and we'll watch the finish together, giving it from the eye view of if you were here with us here. So thanks so much, talk to you soon.